Hi everyone, welcome to Good afternoon. So what do you see now in the world? We help you to make a sense of it. I believe in this webinar, we all can be inspired by the fashion industry in all forms. We have chosen this topic because it will align in us to be more creative in an ever-changing world. When our parents graduated, it may be, have been predictable to go to a remote area to work, but now there is digitalization. And may us inspire you. Thank you for being here and enjoy the webinar. So now um, we have a photo session right now. So in three seconds, three, two, one. Okay. So hi everyone, how are you today? Now from the Philippines and hi, Aviana. you may introduce yourself and your brand and which region you are from. So start with Princess Jahan Dimapur. Princess. Um, I think you're in mute. I think you're in mute. Yes. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> sorry. So, sorry. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Princess Jahan Mangandato Dimapur from Marawi City, Philippines. So, I am the designer of Princess Jahan. Hello. Nice to meet you online. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, okay, Nirani? 
I think everyone knew you to be um, honest. Ayan. <laughs> You've been to the, uh, to yeah, the other but webinar. This is our first time meeting each other online. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, hi everyone. Madayao. Maayong buntag sa tanan. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Naraini Ampatuan and I am a uh, Davao based fashion designer. Hi. Okay. Next. <laughs> My turn. Yes, Iman. Iman wants it. Yes, Iman. She's, she has the most experienced guys, you know. <laughs> yes. All our viewers today. My name is Iman Monter. I'm from Cebu. Right. Not okay. Sure <laughs> Okay, that is so cool. I mean, you guys come from different regions anyway. And yeah, <laughs> and there's a lot of different perspectives that we can come up with to unlock your creativity in modest fashion. And there are many types of challenges you guys face. So, so what are the main challenges um, for you guys to dress up modestly? So, so start with Princess. Um, dressing up modestly here in the Philippines is, um, it's not an easy process. It's not an easy journey. You know, um, for me, you should have the confidence, um, in wearing the modest dressing. You know, in the Philippines, you should also accept the negative feedback and the positive feedback because, like, for example, for the negative feedbacks, people, uh, you would experience sometimes discrimination. But of course, if you know, um, if you have the knowledge and the understanding and acceptance, then it would be an easier journey for you to dress modestly. Right. Um, Narini? Yeah, well, for me, I think the challenges when it comes to modest fashion is sometimes people um, misunderstand the concept of culture and faith when it comes to modest fashion because they have this uh, misunderstanding, especially the non-Muslim, that they have to make sure that is this allowed to wear? Is this okay to um, the public to be seen? And yeah, that's the thing that we have to like educate them and we have to make sure that it's fine to wear um, something like this or like you have to um, like educate them the differences between the culture and your religion so that they are also aware of what they're wearing and what you want them to um, wear from your designs. Yes, that is so true because your, your environment yeah. is actually influencing you. Like, for example, for this webinar, yeah. it's formality. So, like, I dress up like this and then I dress yeah. up some, something else when I'm, like, casually outside. Mm -hmm. so, so, next, Iman. So, what do you think? Well, as a convert, you know, dressing up was like I, the first three months when I became a Muslim, I wanted to wear hijab right away because I want to be identified as a Muslim, you know? So um, for me, for dressing up a modest, in modest fashion is really, is connects you to your belief and your, you know, your faith. So I, for Muslims, I think they have to be confident of what they believe in and they have to be proud of who they are because that's their identity. And the only way that differentiate us from others is how we dress up. And for me, I think there's something that every, every girl should be proud of. But one thing I noticed before, you know, um, the, the challenges that um, Muslims from uh, living in the non-Muslim um, areas are really, you know, like 10 years ago, dressing up modestly is, is such a challenge because you see, I talked to people about, about it during my journey. And then they were, they were saying that, you know, because I started wearing hijab, like, you know, like I was a, a naturally born Muslim. And then they, they, they like it and then they said, oh, how I wish our daughters can confidently wear what you're wearing because when they go to school, when we leave home, they are dressing in hijab. They have the, 
their hijab on, but when they go to school, when they reach the gates of the school, they take it off because hijab at that time, like 10 years ago, is a subject for bullying. But nowadays we're, we're very, we're very lucky this new generation right now because our societies are starting to integrate them. We started to accept yeah. who we are and accept us as part of their society. And I think we should do more. And, you know, it's not just for Muslims, but other religious sects as well, because there, it's not only, because modesty is not only, they call that, um, mm. unique to the Muslim faith. There are also um, Christian sects who are not allowed to wear jeans. So they, they look, still they look odd among their society or their community. Yes. Um, yes, that is so relatable, especially when like we wear jeans and like skinny jeans and we wear hijab. I mean, like, is that like, you know, something, there's something wrong with that, you know, <laughs> from from the other people's like uh, perspectives. Um, like, how do you actually be inspired with this kind of environment? So like, what are the tips? Because there are many like challenges to unlock creativity, right? There, there are many like um, inspirations, but it's very hard to find. And so, so start with Nareni. Um, well, when it comes to inspiration, there's a lot of things that could inspire you. But for me, my I think my technique to inspire myself is I I relate my experiences when it comes to um, like creating or making a new collection. I kind of um, like remember what I had when I was a child, um, and I, and I kind of relate myself what I'm going what I'm going to do if. I was um, a 16 year old today. So what, what inspires me? Something like that, something, an idea that could you know, trigger my creativity, that could inspire me, not just um, in a visual way, but also my inner self. It's really important that you inspire yourself so that you can, people uh, can see and can feel your inspiration. All right. Yeah. So next, Iman. Oh, for creativity, a lucky creativity for, especially for Muslim creatives or non-Muslim creatives who are modest. I think first is uh, the basic moral foundation of our faith. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I think that's where we start because, you know, what should be and what should not be. And then we go from there. Like there are we're not supposed to, right? There are certain things that Muslim women cannot wear. So we'll go from there. What can we wear? And then uh, we'll start, we'll do our creativity from there. We explore our, activi our creativity. It's a very, what do you call that? A, a wide spectrum to still um, explore. Okay, next, uh, Princess. Uh, no, for me, um, modest fashion is for every, everybody, for hijabis and non-hijabis, for both hijabis and non-hijabis. Now, you know, modest mo uh, the meaning of modest is different from every person, from every culture yeah. and every country. Now, uh, for me, um, you know what, uh, mod uh, for me, there are three ingredients for you to become immodest. Um, the first one is the knowledge. Knowledge, what are the advantages for me and what are the disadvantages? And then the understanding. Understanding, why do you want to dress modestly? And then lastly is the acceptance. Acceptance for the positive feedbacks and the negative feedbacks of the people that surround you. Wow. There, uh, can I there's add so many. Uh, yeah. I want to add something about how I'm unlocking creativity is uh, our mindset towards uh, modest uh, fashion and uh, the word modesty um, is um, you know because when we say modest even for the non-muslims um, and for the non-muslim population they 
you cannot think of modesty as like a backward thing. Like it's not trend. It's not on the trend. You're you're out of fashion. You know, we have to um, change our mindset towards that and treat it as a. It's actually as a like a build a building up a character of a person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like it's a. It's what we should all have. You know, like a, our basic fund, moral foundation. Uh, we'll treat it from that, and then, yeah, we can go from there. Yeah, I also agree with that. I think modest yeah. fashion is um, is not um, by force. It, it's a character that it's like you're expressing yourself um, mm -hmm. through modest fashion. Right. Um, a modest fashion from here uh, is actually um, a very conservative thing because most of the ladies my age is actually like wearing this type of scarf and like, you know, just wearing like long skirts and stuff. And like one time I was actually um, like, you know, um, dressing up differently, you know, wearing like tight jeans and then like a, a bit of a mini skirt. Yeah, there's a, that's a turn off like for some um, because uh, because Muslims there, we care about each other. Like the community is white. So maybe for you guys, the one like in the south of uh, south of Philippines, um, like you guys have a big family. Like there's a big community, like a huge community. But for Australia, we we're still minorities. We're the second largest relig religion um, in the country, but um, still, like there's a bit of conservatism in there. There's so, so that's very uh, actually interesting yeah, about the bullying case too. Do you agree, um, Noreen, that there is still conservatism? conservatism here in Philippines yeah Especially with our elders they they, mm -mm. they treat fashion as an evil thing yeah. you know, <laughs> I got it you, you sorry you're gonna laugh at that <laughs> and really it's true because yeah it's you, true they they look at fashion as something evil something that will yes. take them away from from uh from the right path like it's something you know, like uh, take you from to Jahiliya. Actually, uh, we, we a bit when I was started designing and I started you know uh, talking to Mus some Muslims and not not everybody are open minded. Open minded. They are very mm. strict. Who are because we we can look at uh, the fashion and spiritual and and uh, artistic. Artistic you, aspect, perspective, and a spiritual yeah. perspective. So there are people who are looking at treating as a uh, fashion, it's just or Islam, just a uh, spiritual, you know, and just strictly on the spiritual side. They they forget to integrate Islam or forgot Islam. That's it is their way of life, yeah. right? And. Growing up, uh, we are now like in a global, the global world. We are interacting with different culture. We are all of us are uh, women started going out, working, uh, became professionals. We're doctors, we're lawyers, you know, and now we're fashion designers, <laughs> we're artists. <laughs> and that's that's like a barrier to your creativity. Yes, it is, it can it can be okay. a barrier if it's treated that way. If we keep um, looking at um, fashion as just all out evil thing. We have to treat it as something like it's for me. It's a form of dawah, actually. Yeah. It's a form of um, calling people to Islam because. Uh, it opens a, a window of interest for other non-Muslims to understand our culture, our faith, and what really Islam is all about. And actually, I have to say, you know, from I converted in 2007, mm -hmm. and then well, I've, <laughs> I've, I converted in 2007, and I've been, I, I've had several people who, you know, 
who come up to me and when I go out and they appreciate how I look it, from there they become interested and they get interested in religion and some of them they, they even convert right in right on the spot you know and I think that, that that's a it's not a bad thing after all <laughs> you know Islam I mean fashion is something that well is a bridge towards understanding and building peace yeah I think yeah I also <laughs> agree with that I think um I really like respect all the uh, communities when it comes to religious communities but we all have our different mindsets and perspective and vision when it comes to like in general fashion but like what Iman said for the elders sometimes they see fashion as an evil thing but <laughs> yeah but I, I I really agree to that because there are uh, some elders or like community who like they see fashion um, anything attractive is like evil thing you know everything that involves expressing and, and like very vulgar but not in a vulgar in a rude way but anything that could you know express through like for example fashion is like not considered um what do you call halal to them but i really respect that i really respect that vision it's just we all have this different mindsets and perspective so i'm really happy to you know every beliefs okay what's your opinion princess um for me yes i agree with miss iman you know it's not that easy um there are a lot of people who are close-minded so if you are going to launch a design you need to accept the negative feedbacks and be open-minded i think um it would be a bit challenging for you to to read some negative feedbacks but it would be also a um way for you to improve and to have innovation you know um uh, modest fashion is um for me, it's okay to uh, be innovative with the regards to the fashion. Uh, just make sure that the design should not be um, too much uh, skin revealing and it should also satisfy the spiritual and the religion and the faith of every Muslim. Hmm. So, so from each of you guys' point of view, like from my experience it's actually like I was the only like one who's wearing hijab and in a fashion class although my school has a lot of like Muslims who wear hijab but I was the only one and that made me feel like like you know fashion is like discriminatory to um, hijabers yeah so it's the same kind of mindset of uh, you know there's this uh, barrier of Islam is a culture, but then Islam is supposed to enlighten culture and then modesty. Oh, Islam or like any other religion, modesty is meant to enlighten the culture just by covering up. And like, you know, for example, your brand um, uh, HS is actually the in now, right? It emphasizes in now. So, um, just by covering up, you know, like that's still modesty, but still it enlightens culture. And then your brand name, like what is your example? To like to enlighten um, culture as well um, through your brand. Since like the, the design process like is, is very heavy for the culture and stuff. You're asking me or Noraini? No, Iman. <laughs> She's asking you. I said Iman. Sorry. Yeah, you know, it's of like listening to like, yeah, yeah, All right. Sure. So, so you're asking me. Well. Yeah, um, so so like how do you apply your culture in Cebu City, especially the, the one that related to your religion into your brother designs and your clients as well? Well, you know, uh, for I, I started designing since 2000. I was 18 years old. 
So that's like 10 years in the fashion industry. And 99.9% per, .9 of my clients are non-Muslims. So I, I only started, what do you call that? I only started um, expressing what I really believe in or my, my like, Your vision. Or, mm, when I started my own fashion, you know, my bridal line and my fashion line, after I started fashion, um, I'm doing, I, I started, uh, I forgot the word, the RTW factory back, way back in 2007. And it started, I think it started, well, that's the start of like, um, what do you call that? Um, fashion, a modest fashion revolution in the West. So we're exporting modest fashion uh, clothing there, Europe and USA. But, you know, I have to, like I studied um, their culture, what the West needs, what the Western women actually, they, they need at the moment. And that helped me um, cater to that, uh, this kind of market. So, so what was the result of your um, research of Western, Western Muslim women who wants to dress modestly or even non-Muslim women, to be honest? Well, th that time it was still difficult because um, the Western women wanted to dress up really as much as possible Western. You know, they don't have a baya. I think that's where the development came from because we started doing tunics and maxi dresses. So uh, from there, we explored uh, further. We have suits, we have um, jackets, trench coats. I have almost like everything right now, you know, from even from from the, the what do you call this? The scarf. The job. Yeah, to the pants. We have we have a lot of varieties. When we were starting, we were just doing tunics, long blouses, you know. That's for the Western Muslim population. And nowadays, oh, there's a lot of, um, already there's a lot of uh, options. Different for, pieces and yes. categories. Mm, yeah, it's true. Right, so Princess, um, uh, could you please tell about your experience about how your clients view on, on the kind of hijab style they would want. Like, would they want um, those turbans or like, you know, the simple ones like you and I kind of wear? Um, um, with regards with the design, um, you know what? I, I, honestly, I'm so honored right now to be with Miss Iman and Miss Narayani because I don't have formal schooling with the design. You know, I really had a hard time with this journey, but I always tell myself that um, uh, people appreciate it, so you need to show to the world that you have this talent that Allah gave you. So for me, with regards to design, um, um, I would really respect the opinion of my client because you know what? Um, um, there's a saying that customer is always right, right? So I, I would really respect their opinion. Then after um, asking them, and then I would suggest, that would be my first word. I would suggest that this would be the better uh, design for you. Because you know what? When you do the hijab, you also like contouring the face, just like how the makeup do. So mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, sometimes... There are a uh, face that are too uh, too long, oblong. So you should um, contour the, the the scar to the face of your clients also. So I really yeah. have this. Um, I really have this. Um, you know, I really um, consider the shape, even the shape of the head. There are times that you know clients have this flat head at the back that would be hard to design on it. So I need something to volumize at the back. So even though the bride turns turns uh, her back, it would still look stunning with, uh, of course, it would also complement the, the scarf to the gown of the bride. 
So like, if you don't mind, um, what kind of clients um, you still have, like as in um, uh, the uh, different regions of the Philippines, like from Cebu City, um, Zamboanga even? I, uh, okay. I went before to Cotabato. I have two clients from Cotabato and then I have also from Iligan City, then Cagayan de Oro. There was once um, someone contacted me from Manila, but it was already pandemic. My husband didn't allow me. My husband told me, okay, you can design that, but after after you came home, you might have that COVID. <laughs> okay, he cares about so, you, yeah. yeah. There's nothing uh, wrong with that. Pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, so um, Princess and Iman have a relationship uh, between like the design process that you have because you guys are like doing bridal like for a big day. I mean, it must be very tiresome. Um, what could you share about your experiences with the clients and what kind of design they want, especially the, um, the one who prefers modest? And how do they... Feel about your brand too. <laughs> okay, what's, what's going on? What's a long question? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> we're confused. Too. Who's going to start? Uh, Iman. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, for me, it's uh, it's actually it's. I just I'm just going to start my officially my modest bridal wear this year. You know okay okay and that's it that, before that uh i have several i have like a, a variety of clients but i like i said before 99 percent is are muslim are non-muslims they are christians they are from different um places Conditions. so um so for the the non-muslim population they prefer something that is trendy but I introduced something before, like before they were wearing tube only, you know, this tube. So I still, I cater to what they really want, but I put sleeves on it. I put sleeves and then it's uh, decorated with laces. So it's less um, a skin revealing, but I only get very happy when I get uh, a Muslim client, which is very rare. <laughs> because and in our, I do the Muslims I too? Want, do they the want? Mm -hmm. Designer? Yeah. So, so the Muslims, do they actually want trendier stuff too? Because we all want trendier stuff. It's not just Muslims and not Muslim, isn't it? A uh, mix, still also mix. I have um, niqabi. I have people who wear niqab who also wants to look uh, to still have that niqab on and and you know wear close to that um, aesthetic. For the non niqabi, just a hijab, hijab wearing Muslim, practicing Muslims, the yeah, the this the two love to wear trendy um, bridal gowns. Yeah, and from Instagram, I, I actually saw um, from Spain, she wears niqab only on Instagram. So like she's trying to be those, those trendy ones. Okay, so uh, Nureini, yeah. Well, um, to be honest, I, I just started my brand way back September 2018 and I only... Um, have I only had seven pieces of sweatshirts with the traditional textiles that we have we have which is the inol the hand woven fabric from the Maguindanaon communities and after that I only had seven pieces that I launched and then I stopped for almost um for almost how many months how many months and then I I I came back um with the business and after, I think that was May 2019, after so many months of like um, pro procrastinating and doing nothing, I had the gut to really start the brand because it's something that would, you know, help me uh, and encourage me how to like um, show to the, to the world and to the communities that 
I will, I got this, I know, you know, I sense this responsibility that if I will um, pursue this profession or my, like my career, then I could possibly help the communities that where I came from, like, for example, the Maguindanawan and the Iranuns. And that's the, like, that, like, that's the um, intention. And that's the thing that really pursued me to do what I really love or like the passion, what I have right now. And yeah, that's that's how I started my brand. I only had a few pieces and I had to like I only had one suit and one pants that I wore during the Jakarta Mod- Modest Fashion Week way back 2018. And then I think this coming June 30, Modest Fashion Manila, this will be my first first ever collection. <laughs> and yeah. It's really okay. nice to be part of you and have this conversations with you guys so that kind of creativity is actually very very special too because it's it's at the time where maybe you feel like you're not motivated to do anything so yeah then you, you feel like that, you're starting you and it's like you're forced and you have that um like your mind is not ready to do something and i don't i don't want to have that kind of mindset you know you know, sometimes we people are like, in general, humans, we have to be prepared, like our whole 100% body and mind have to prepare on what kind of project or idea that we're going to showcase to the world so that we know how to tell our story. We know how to, um, you know, we, we know how to showcase what we are um, like, uh, show, uh, what we are producing and showcasing from our brand. Yeah, it's, re- it's really important. Okay, what's your take, Princess? Um, for me, just like what I said during our per- during the first interview, this is only a hobby that turns out into a career. So before I only use the you know the things that the accessories, I only use the things that I can buy through online, even inside um, through online uh, shopping. And then now, what I did, um, I usually ask my client to send me a picture of the gown, then I would really do it be personalized, a personalized uh, scarf accessories. So it can complement with the gown. Before I only buy buy it through online. But now I, I, I really love playing with the beads. You know, I really love that small things. That, um, even my children would really love the colors of the beads. Even during this, um, oh, this journey for the modest fashion, I have a picture of them, you know, I tell them, okay, you separate the pink one and then they were having fun with they it fun. because, you know, uh, just what, yeah, just like what I've said, I don't have the formal schooling. I don't have, I don't have, the, uh, you know, I I already told my mom, my God, mom, <laughs> this is a big event that it seems like I don't have this kind of idea what would be the the color wheel and then things like that because I really don't know it was only a hobby that turns out into a career but then alhamdulillah you know just let your creative mind flow and do your do the thing with your hands so yeah. that's it I kind of finished the kind of finished the the uh the collection actually this is the first collection that I had you know what during the journey thinking of what material should I use I really had a hard time um to think for the material that I'm going to use for the virtual fashion show. But alhamdulillah, with the help of my mom, my parents, I was able to finalize. And then uh, I already talked to the Marina Weavers. So I was really, uh, honestly, when I talked to a Marina Weaver, it really crushed my heart because um, when I went to her, she told me that, why do you want to buy... um, this uh this material then i told her i would like to use this one as my main material for my collection and then she said that you know what um 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 young generation right now don't appreciate things like this and then i that's uh with that word i already finalized that i'm going to use your material and i'm going to make it in a modern uh design that even the new generation would appreciate it. Actually, she was a little, uh, she was a little bit teary eyed that time, and then she told me, "You come back after the virtual fashion show, and then you buy lots of this material." Inshallah. And I said, "Yes, I promise. I will. I will return." Yeah. 
Yes, inshallah. Inshallah. So, uh, mm. my my most curious thing right now is that um, uh, you guys analyze the personality of other people so that you can get their fashion style. And like, how do you do that? Because like sometimes when I just like scroll through Instagram or something or just walk through the shops, like, oh, you know, um, that person would look good and da, 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 da. yeah. So how, so how do you do that? Like, what is the design process? So start with Princess, I think, because you're a hijab stylist. I mean, you're oh. a expert in like, you know, hijab and how to how to analyze the personality in terms of hijab yeah uh, okay now you know what most of my clients um i only met them during the wedding day so you know for the bridal makeup it will took an hour or more than an hour so during the makeup you know the makeup artist would ask me um why why so early um you can go here after 30 uh, 20 minutes or 30 minutes after we finish then i would just smile and sit beside the makeup artist because i would like to observe the client so while the makeup artist is doing the makeup i would like to observe the way she smile the shape of the face this is to make sure that um the design and the the way that uh, the way i put the scarf would really fit the bride you know it it would be a challenging for me because in during weddings the bride is the apple of the uh, the eyes she should yeah. be the most beautiful woman inside that room so it really it will sometimes it will take more than an hour sitting down just looking at the bride in the mirror observing the way she smiled um the way she talk and then that's it and then i would prepare while uh, looking at her i would prepare everything that i need before i start the styling the scarf of the bride okay man oh me <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> I was enjoying, I was enjoying Princess, how she, because I was visualizing how she's doing it. And, you know, I have to be, I have to, what do you call that? Um, I, uh, I, praise is not a really nice word, right? I really comment on your styling because it's as if, it's as if you're making the gown because we really compliment that. Uh, gown with your hijab styling really yeah. thank you <laughs> and for that question um aviana well um yes i study uh their personality i i try to feel i try to feel the client as much as possible so i know you know what style are they comfortable with and what style really like speaks like it's them, it's theirs, it's really theirs. You know, the problem with some of the designers is they let the creativity go crazy. You know, they just uh, design whatever they want, but they don't care about the client. They just want to make that gown because, oh, I, I wanted to make that gown for a long time ago. I wanted this to happen with this person. But for me, it's different. I, I try to look at, I don't care if my designs uh, becomes redundant because Sometimes you just want to dress up. It's the client after all, you know? At the end of the day, it's about the client. It's about mm -hmm. the, the person, it's not you. It's, it's how you translate, you know, your design and fit that design to the person. That's why you are called a designer because here is your subject and you have to do, you know, uh, dress her up. Yeah, that, that's such a challenge, though, because it's a sensitive subject, you know, Iman, right? <laughs> so, Hilia. Yeah. Um, it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry, yeah, I Iman, really, you are saying? I also, I, yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> what was oh, okay. Iman saying? Okay, Noreni, no. <laughs> yeah, I also agree to Princess and Iman with their uh, statements, because, um, you have to really consider the personality of the client. Like what Iman said, it's the end of the day, it's the client who's going to wear your designs. And your, your, your role is just to make them feel beautiful of what they're wearing, right? So it's their yes. confidence and it's their feeling of 
it's the it's the comf- it's the comfortability of what they what they feel when they're wearing your piece. So uh, for me, um, I think first thing that I consider when it comes to observing the personal personality of the client is I really ask their favorite color. Like favorite color tells everything about their about themselves. Like if their favorite, mm-hmm. yeah. If their favorite color is black and white, so you can really tell that, oh, her, her, her favorite color is black and white. So I guess this is a bit minimalist person. She doesn't like maximalism. She doesn't like vibrant colors. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you get what I mean? Like it, you can really observe the personality oh, yes. of a person by just asking her favorite or his favorite color. So that's when yeah, you start. Technology. Yeah, that's when you start like... um creating your designs with that specific person because like what I said earlier, it's really important that she or he feels that he's or uh, she or he is really confident of what she's wearing. I have to. It, it's I what have, really you know, matters. This, this is why I'm observing, you know, this, uh, the two of you have a medical background. Like they are <laughs> both medical yeah. professionals. What it is? What is it with the medical professional um, uh, world that attracts to fashion? <laughs> what do you know? Oh, right. Yeah, I only had two years question. experience. Oh I only my god! Two years experience. Yeah, because medical is like practical, isn't it? And yeah, it now you're dancing practical. with intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, because here in Cebu, we have so many. Also, we have several. I I know several nursing background and uh, this with uh, designers with nursing background or they were you they were medical professional background before they became designers so that's why i'm wondering what is it <laughs> what I'm actually, want- um, yeah. um, um, let's start there, with you first princess okay. you know what um the definition actually of nursing is nursing is an art maybe most of the nurses are very artistic, even in folding the beddings, even yeah. in preparing the medication. You need to be organized. I think that would be a, a, a great contribution also for designer, a uh, uh, medical professional who became designers because mm-hmm. the way you prepare your patient, it should be organized because I, I would remember my teacher would say, if you don't look pretty in front of your patient, then your patient wouldn't be that happy at all. So, and then everything would be organized. I think it's a great um, contribution also being a nurse to become also a designer because you have the, being a nurse, you need to be artistic also in taking care of your patient. <laughs> yeah, so many utensils, you know, like to categorize all those um you know, the human body as well. And that's what inspires you to be really neat because you're like categorizing all the brochures there, um, uh, the pins, the colored pins, like the pink pins, the the yellow pins. Mm -hmm. So what about Nureni? Because uh, you did went to medical school for a little bit. Yeah. So tell us more about that. To be honest, to be honest, I only had two years of experience of studying nursing. And I didn't have the opportunity uh, the opportunity to finish the course because I shifted to fashion design. And um, what comes into my mind that when it comes to nursing or like medical course, it, it, it's really obvious that in medical field, everything is clean and it should be modest, you know, because you're dealing with lives. Like you cannot wear dark colors in front of your patient. You cannot be, you know, dirty and you cannot be like very, you know, it's it's like you have to be uh, modest and clean. Yeah. <laughs> Even the colors, like, have, have you noticed that um, nursing and like the doctors are just wearing white? Because mm-hmm. white is like a cool color and it's very pleasing. It's like the color is saying that, you know, it, the life is fine. Everything's going to be okay. Don't worry about yourself. <laughs> You're going to heal and Something like that. It's it's really important that it's you have to you have that um you have to show the feeling from the, the visual aspects, and that's what I learned when it comes to medical field. But when I transferred to fashion design, everything went like opposite. Everything is like <laughs> everything from the medical course is like the opposite side when it comes to like fine arts or like fashion design because 
in when it comes to fashion design and or fine arts like painting, industrial design, interior design, visual communication, you really have to express your mind. You really have to express your thoughts, your feelings, your um like the best of your inspirations, like something like that. So you two are really the great examples of how individuals can unlock their inner passion for arts. <laughs> medical fields yeah. to arts, right? Yeah. I, I was a, a frustrated doctor. <laughs> I had I had my health issues. I had my health issues. That's why I didn't have the opportunity to finish the course. But I guess it's kadar. <laughs> yeah, I shifted I to fashion so. design, and this is you, this Abiana? is what I am now. <laughs> How about you, Aviana? Do you have like a, if you were not a fashion journalist, would you have? Would you be something else? How would you? Okay, to be yeah. honest, like my um. So there's a difference, right? The things that I like, the things that I'm actually talented at, okay? I was good at IT, to be honest, like you, Iman. <laughs> like, I got like A's in high school for IT, like computing, you know, those like hardware stuff and then like world area network. Yeah, um, so that taught me um, creativity and the importance of creativity because sometimes in computing- How did, you, how did you like shift? Like how's this transition? went like from IT, your affinity to IT to fashion? Um, well, I started when I was like 15 years old because I just love to design. And plus in my hometown, Perth, <laughs> okay, Perth people, okay, be watching, right? Um, there's not a lot of creativity in, in how we dress as Muslim hijabis. And I got a bit of criticism for the way I dress too, the way I, I approach style. And that's what got me to like journalism so that I can like, you know, like inspire mm -hmm. others that creativity is beyond limits, um, especially in Australia. So, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, you guys have like a different kind of um, motivations to go into design. As like this quote says, um, creativity is like um, intelligence dancing around. I, I feel like yeah. it, it's more difficult than, than practical things. I'm not really that sure, but like, you know, being a fashion designer, isn't it very hard working? Like as in like with your body too. <laughs> and then your creativity, you have to be constantly creative and not do repetitive yeah. things. Yeah, because people expect something new every time mm -hmm. from you. Yeah, yeah, like people always expect something innovative from you, and like something new from for their eyes. They want something like a signature piece from you. So you really have to get your creativity works every time. Mm -hmm. You said you know you have to choose a profession. Like a wise man said. In Instagram, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone goes there. I read it from Instagram. He said, "You know, you have to um, choose a profession that you like a hobby as a profession, so you don't feel like working at all." Yeah. So I you don't think, feel I mean, like it's, I. It's um, yeah. It's, it's you know, it, they're my toys. The fabrics are my toys. Yeah. It makes me become connected to my authentic self when I'm yeah. doing something. Imagine, That's really you know, nice. COVID-19, we're all locked down. Yeah. And I was locked down in a place where I didn't have any access to that for one year. So I was so, you know, I was so like frustrated. frustrated. Yeah, you're right. Like we are, we all have to cope up with the and adapt with the situation. It's really difficult, like, for for us when it comes to fashion industry since pandemic has like mm -hmm. gave us so much limitations mm -hmm. but that, I, but i but, it, but mm -hmm. i really believe that it also opened some opportunities <laughs> like like this what we're having right now right yeah virtual yeah. virtual modest fashion show yeah i think um i was I was actually expecting a modest fashion Philippines a long time ago. Like, I think um, it's just us 
who doesn't have the modest fashion week yeah. right true. because it's yeah. from from other countries they already from yeah. london turkey dubai, dubai yeah. indonesia they already had their modest fashion weeks and i think philippines deserve modest fashion week because we yes. all have our muslim filipinos here like living yeah. here in the yeah. south part so many. yeah yeah you guys have a strong yeah. history of um modest yeah. fashion as well especially from your ancestors too yeah that's 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 really nice because um our intentions is like the core of our intentions is the same because we all want our communities to be recognized yes. yeah to integrate the rest i mean philippines i mean mindanao or the muslim culture to the rest of the people in the yeah. philippines and from philippines to the world yeah you're right right mm-hmm. Because, because sometimes people are people skin. have this mindset that it's if when you when you're telling you're from the Philippines they actually like um they they actually assume that you're from a Christian communities right because Philippines yeah. is not a Muslim country and yeah. that's what they're you know assuming and but it's fine because we we are still thriving and you know we're doing our best to for the Muslim Filipinos to be recognized. True. I remember when we were in Dubai, when I visited my aunt, they thought I am a Malaysian. Then when I yeah. said that I am a Filipina, they were really shocked. Uh, they are Muslim in the Philippines? Yes, yeah. there, is. there yeah. is. I thought you were a Malaysian. No, I am a pure-blooded <laughs> Filipina. Mm. They were really, really shocked the- because they thought that there are no Muslims here in the Philippines. Yeah. That sad. was a bit sad. <laughs> that was like, but sad. but I but I also have the same experience like what Princess had when I was in Jakarta way back 2018. Like I when I wa- when I was wearing my suit like in all suit, they actually asked me if I bought the the textile from like Afghanistan or like out of the upper side of the Russia. <laughs> no. I told them that no, I, I I bought this in our community. They the the Muslim communities in Philippines like they made this, so they were actually amazed because they didn't expect that there were hand like there were hand woven fabrics here in Mindanao, and they didn't expect that there are existing Muslim Filipinos, and they all they 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 um had to ask me that if I was a convert <laughs> because I was from the Philippines. So, then I told them that no, I'm a, I'm a um, born Muslim and I am not a convert. So they were really shocked. Mm-hmm. But it's nice that they get to know our history and our backgrounds. Sometimes the way you dress, it starts a conversation. You know, yeah. I remember when I uh, we went to I went to Manila and then a British who is just beside me and ask me why do you dress like that so it starts in the conversation you also gain friends also because of the way you yeah. dress they are very curious yeah. what do you and they would really ask what do you call this thing on your head and why do you wear is it hot wearing that to mm-hmm. a long sleeve and to mm-hmm. long clothing you know it it would really start a conversation and with that the way you dress it would re- you yeah. would really gain new friends yes that's really nice and you get to inspire them by what what you're wearing because they get to like learn new things from you like how you dress yeah. and how you do how you wear your fashion that's yeah, nice open conversation and understanding you know they yeah. know those who are uh, stereotyping us stereotyping the muslims will get to understand what really Islam is and why we dress up like this. Yeah. Awesome. That's because, <laughs> uh, you know, from my experience when when I was in high school, right? That was like a long time ago. Um, like there's this, I, I have lots of Filipino friends, but then I just don't like talk to them very much because I was with the other, right. with the other friends, yeah. And yeah. Um, uh, we were in geography class, and then um, one of my teachers, if I can remember, they're like, oh, um, are they Muslim Filipinos? And they're like, yeah, there are, and, the, and they're Christian too, in the South. And then like, yeah, that got me thinking too. 
and that wasn't a surprise when when there is modest fashion manila to be honest and You're right. um nice. yeah they're really open with with conversations like that especially the um the australian filipinos too Sorry, I thought you were gonna talk about something else. That's the good thing in the Philippines because we have different our uh, religion, different cultures, but the um people would really accept um the different dif the differences. So the, that's the good thing. I remember during my college days, we uh we are only I guess less uh, we I only have less Muslim classmates and the rest are all Christians with different religions like born again, but we get along very well. Even now, they are not in abroad. We still have this communication also. This That is the uh, good thing here in the Philippines because we have different cultures. We can learn to, to accept the different the different religions and the different cultures. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, like like and we are... There's no, what do you call that, discrimination much, yeah. right? Unlike uh, what you read from the newspapers from other places countries yes discrimination march really uh, there is what, like, what was that um iman said there is a discrimination march no when is that no there's no discrimination oh here. sorry yeah there's no discrimination. yeah of course uh we strive to to just have peace and that's fashion what what fashion actually is it's just to like to know that there is differences personally i don't really support those like those fashion that's like you know that doesn't have like culture in it like the one that doesn't have like you know what i mean like um there's no kind of sense of branding that is genuine i guess and yeah there's just a lot of uh creativity in the way you express yourself. So, so as fashion designers, how do you find yourself to actually um, create your brand? Like how, like how, um, how often do you do research for it, and to constantly be creative? Seriously, like it's it's actually a a very difficult thing to be constantly be creative. Well, start with is it okay to yeah well yeah. to be honest um well to be honest where in where if you're in a fashion industry um for like for me huh, i'm actually considering that i'm not just like designing a piece but i'm also like introducing a style mm -hmm. because th that's the point of being in a fashion industry right yes. it's, it's about like it's, it's about making your your expressing your own style expressing your own thoughts um through fashion and that's what I really um, consider. Like, for example, my target market. There's a certain, uh, like, there's a certain groups that you have to consider. There's, like, Gen Z, there's Millennial, and there's, like, Baby Boomers. I don't know so, about Gen Z even. Who are they? <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's sorry. Millennials. Who so are the Gen Z? Yeah, like, there's a lot of categories you have to consider. Because, like, like for right, the children, they, they wear... <laughs> Yeah, you don't look like you. You look young, believe me. <laughs> so you have to consider interrupting. It's okay. It's okay. So you have to consider like if you're in a fashion industry, you have to consider the categories of the certain groups because it's mm. that that um in that way you can like um create your categories. Like for example, um in my in my case, I actually made um at three different categories for my first collection and it's the rtw like the ready to wear and the lux wears and the high fashion like for example for the ready to wears i have this um vision that it's only for like teenagers it's mm -hmm. for the young adults that could you know afford the pieces that that has the ready to wear styles so yeah. for the lux wears it's for like from the ages from the 30s to 40s because you have to consider the costings and the prices mm -hmm. like the teenagers they can't afford what you have from high fashion or like rtw like the ready to wears because if you're gonna sell five thousand pesos or eight thousand pesos 
to a teenager, maybe they can afford that kind of fees, right? Because they're they're just a student and they're they're like still depending on their parents. So that's what I really um uh take seriously when it comes to branding. Like you have to um like you have to organize your target market and your branding, how you want people to uh, recognize you. And yeah. How about you guys? <laughs> yeah, about you guys. <laughs> well, go first. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that question? Okay, I'll just call out the names, yeah? <laughs> okay, okay, uh, okay, I'll go first. first yes, you must. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, for me, it's not for myself. Actually, I'm looking at the wider spectrum, not just me, but for my fellow artists and creatives. It's for... It's for really it's serving, you know, our the what we are doing. We have to understand that they are serving our community, not just yeah. here in the Philippines, but all over the world. Imagine we are two billion almost, right? Two billion or more than that. All, all over the world? world? I guess it's seven billion. We are seven billion, but two billion Muslims. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah that market Muslim. alone, he, the 2 billion Muslims, just, just the Muslims, and maybe 40% of it are females, right? Yeah. And, and we are not the only consumers of modest fashion. There are also others from other religious sects. And that's a large market. And, you know, and who can do better? Who can design better? Muslim or modest fashion um, dresses for us, if not us, right? We yeah. have to stop relying on the outsiders to do something for us. We have to dress ourselves. We have to dress up each other. And then, yeah. of course, it helps the economy also of people. Like in, yeah. in your area, you have uh, the ancient, still the ancient technique of what they call that, uh, raving fabric, a textile uh, weaving. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we have to help that economy and, you know, our creativity should also consider those, like all the, the small business enterprises, our, our sewers, our seamstresses, our tailors, we have to give them jobs. We have to yeah. help them, the economy. And then another, last maybe is for the preservation of our culture because if we we'll let, let other you know if we we'll let other people design clothing for us our identity becomes uh, it will diminish like the language you know if we let it travel if, if we let the style or let other people design what for us then our identity becomes less and less as time goes. So for me, that uh, that's all I can say. Okay, hey, princess. Um, for me, um, I guess um, I when I decided for uh, the, the material that I use, the first thing that comes in my mind is my my parents who are now uh, now in Riyadh because of the pandemic. And then I remember my dad being a daughter of a diplomat. I remember my dad who is very fond of supporting the local products, even though we are staying overseas before. So then my mom is very fond also of um, wearing the Maranao Malong or the, anything that Maranao accent. Like the yeah, she would really uh -huh. represent herself in a diplomat's party wearing that one. So um, for me, um, I I decided to use the uh, the material of the Marino weavers. This is also to preserve and also to to help them since according to them, they, they don't have, uh, they don't get a lot of orders nowadays because people, the new generation don't appreciate it anymore. So there's a, a relationship between creativity and your ancestors too, and like yeah. your grandparents, your parents yeah. as well. It's your biggest motivations to create. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's like culture. For the design, culture is a great integral part of the design. 
Yeah, you're right. You're absolutely right. All right. So before like uh, time is running out, like there's this last question that I'm actually very curious about. Like, do you actually support simple kind of fashion? And and how do you feel about it? Or do you feel like other people need need to dress up a bit more, especially if it's like like the low uh, kind of um, uh, prices, like as simple as that. So start with uh, Iman. Oh, for me. So do you have a lot of experience in this thing? Um, um, well, my, for my line of business, it's, it's all about dressing up. It's one in a lifetime event. So they really invest on that, uh, their clothes. So, but I think for uh, this question really fits uh, Naraini because she's, she's, her market is the ready to wear everyday clothes, right? Um, I, yeah, of course I, I support both because sometimes you're, you know, it depends on your mood. You want to go out of your house, well-dressed up, you want to, you know, you sh to show off. Right, or sometimes there are days that you just you want to wear simple, but sim um, dressing up in a way that it doesn't really look to, to yeah, that's like too attractive. Yeah. Yeah, you know, it's something like too eccentric for, um, for us to wear. But of course, it depends on every person. Yeah. Right? There's a personality. Are you ready? Yeah, that's right. I also agree to Miss Iman that it's it, it really depends on the person if whether what she or he prefers to wear. But um to be honest, I'm I'm really into I'm also into minimalism, but um because min when you say minimalism, it's actually it's also um it it um, it's also like considering that a person chooses to be like minimal, minimal or like a simple style because like minimalism is also being practical, right? Because like you, you're just um, you're just wearing clothes, very simple clothes, and you're just wearing two tone clothes. But I guess it really depends on the person wearing a clothes. And it's for my in my case for my branding, it really depends as long as it has a signature piece. It doesn't matter if it's simple, but as long as it's it's like it has a signature piece or anything, um, like it's it's like a form of expression. Then I think that's okay. It really depends on the person. Yeah, like we aspire to, we aspire ourselves to actually look, like trying trying to make ourselves look much more neater or like beautiful yeah. because there are there are yeah. there are like persons who prefer to be like simple and if you want them to like tell them that oh you should like dress up more and even though you want them to like put put like extravagant clothes if but but they're not confident with it so it's hmm. it really depends on their comfortability and their confidence you cannot like tell a person that he or she should wear this if she's not confident with it, right? So there's such thing as like someone who is minimalized, um, doing minimalism and then someone mm. who just doesn't care what they wear. They're just like, oh, it doesn't match. And then they go yeah. out. That's why yeah. you designers don't prefer the world. See, well, like I that. guess I'm in the middle. Like for example, the Uniqlo brand. Have you noticed the Uniqlo? They're like yeah. into simplicity like and that. very yeah. minimalism, like Uniqlo. Yeah, but yeah. even though they're minimalism, their product is like their quality, the quality of their products is really, really nice. Like everything is made in Japan. Everything is like um, made efficiently and like the texture of their fabric is really nice. You can really tell, you can really tell that it's like high quality fabrics. Mm. All right, what's your view on minimalism, uh, Princess? Um, for me, um, simplicity, simplicity is beautiful. You know what? Sometimes um, it doesn't matter if you wear too much of that accessories or too much of that 
um, you know what? Uh, uh, more design, uh, design layering clothes. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. It's how you carry yourself in front of many people. How you yeah. behave in front. Then your physical appearance would um if you um present yourself with confidence, even though you are wearing this simple clothing, then it will really look amazing in front of many people. Okay. At the end of the day, we are the ambassadors of our, of each of our, you know, of our, whatever background they come from. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Designers are like that too. Yeah. So, okay. So what, what kind of message do you want to give to your community? Because now it's like time running out. And especially how they should style themselves, maybe. Because, of course, designers, you want to see the world beautiful, right? Beautiful, like, um, you know, people dressing up the way they're supposed to. So start with mm -hmm. um, a Princess. Okay. Now, for me, modest fashion is a modest dressing. It's all about your choices and you should be confident and comfortable wearing it. Iman? Um, for me, is we have to stop. Uh, I will repeat, I mean, what I said uh, earlier that we have to look at a modest fashion and fashion in general as a positive thing with a positive uh, I because if we keep looking at it as an, an evil thing then how are we going to dress ourselves and be better at dressing up if we keep you know like pushing it away and like I said also earlier we are the ambassadors of our of where we came from so if we you know if we neglect that who is going to dress us up right yeah so we have we have to allow ourselves to be creative in this field because who will make us like for the food who, who would you allow someone to prepare halal food or slaughter your meat you know so it's the yeah. same as in fashion would you allow someone you know to dress you up when they don't even understand your uh, values. But yeah, values is important in fashion too. But true. Um, and Rainy? Yeah, I I agree to what Princess and Iman said. And for me, I think um, my message to the community is that don't like don't stop yourself from expressing who you are, especially when it comes to like fashion in general, like. If, if you want to dress up this way or if you want people to like see who you, what, what you really are, like I always believe that fashion is a form of self-expression. So it's like a tool for us to like boost our confidence, to be like being true to ourselves. It's really important that we are confident with what, we're, what we are wearing. And that's what really inspires me to like do more and like create more um, pieces when it comes to fashion industry that we should not stop ourselves from doing what we love and we should continue expressing ourselves through fashion. Right. I feel like the, um, the world needs fashion right now, needs more values within ourselves. Yeah. There's a lot of information around the, like the technology and stuff. I, I don't blame technology personally, but I, feel like I blame ourselves for not reminding ourselves our values and just the way we dress and especially how we represent ourselves. Yeah, we need to be proactive also in every, right, in every aspect. That we, uh, we have to be self-sufficient and yeah. become proactive. Unlocking creativity, wow. Unlocking creativity, you need to remind your values. That's the conclusion of this thing, yeah. um, this webinar. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, um, Nureini, Princess, and Iman, and to represent your brand as well, and to represent like everyone that just reminding your values that 
that's the way you dress. That's how you unlock your creativity. Um, nowadays, there's not, there's no reminded reminder of what is culture. Everyone is the same. Everyone wants to be the same. Yeah. <laughs> and that's, that's just not it. And fashion designers, I feel like um, your passion is to inspire differences. And that's what makes us um, unite and connected. Thank you very much. Very much. Thank you. Thank you, Aviana. Thank you. Nice to meet you, Iman and Princess. Nice to meet you. <laughs> 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 Hope to meet you like, someday. <laughs> Inshallah. Yeah. Inshallah. Inshallah. We're all excited Inshallah. for yeah. Modest Fashion Manila. Godspeed, guys. <laughs> Stay tuned for Modest Fashion Manila on the 30th of June featuring Manila's and international designers. So stay tuned for that. See you next time from HM News Australia. I'm Aviana Hermawan.